Hello TLC family, this is Pastor Luke. I'm ready for another session, another Bible study. I want to call this one Turning to Jesus. Amen. Looking, turning to Jesus. When you need to turn, when you need to look, when you need to find solutions, when you need to find answers, when you need to find uh, the reason why we do what we do. If you turn to Jesus, if you look to Jesus, there will be a supply for you. Amen. Jesus is so wonderful. He's so good. He's such a perfect Savior. Uh, he loves us so much. He cares about us so much. He, he provided so much. It's the Christianity, oh hallelujah, it's so good to be a son of God or, or a daughter of God. It's so good to have Jesus as our Savior, as our Redeemer. We, sh we ought to be the most optimistic people that we ever come in contact with. Amen. You, you ought to see Christians, and Christians ought to have a smile on their face, right? A big smile on their face. What, what, are, you, what are you excited about? Well, what's new in your life? Well, I'll tell you what, there's so much for us to be excited about. There's so much for us to be uh, enthusiastic about. Amen. Just like, you know, we just, my, my daughter, my youngest daughter, Eliana, she's three and a half months now, and it's just exciting, right, to see her. I come home and I, I look at her. She's my she's my daughter, and I'm, I'm excited to see what, how, how she looks. And she's, you know, she's constantly changing because they're growing so much. But my love for her, I mean, I, I don't know how to explain it. How much more God our Father, Amen. When we look to to Him, how He's so. Uh, he gets giddy when when we look to Him. He gets excited when we look to Him. He gets. Uh, uh, what's the word? He, 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 we're, he, we're always on His mind. He never stops thinking about you. You think you think about yourself more than anybody, probably so. But God thinks about you and He's already provided for you everything that you ever needed pertaining to life and godliness. So it's good to be you. You know, if people would just change their attitude and look to Jesus, life would be a whole lot simpler. It would be a whole lot more enjoyable. You'll, get, you'll be uh, easy to get along with. You won't have, it doesn't mean you won't have uh, tests and trials, but man, you'll, when you look at Jesus and, and how exalted and how, how His finished works are more than enough. We talked about grace and how, he, how His grace is sufficient. We'll look at life's trials and we'll be like Paul and we'll say, none of these things move me, neither do I count my life dear unto myself. Hallelujah. So uh, we, ought, we ought to be so established in, in Christianity where we're constantly, we, we, we never look away. Amen. We're always looking to Him. Looking to Him. Looking to the author and the finish of our faith. Yeah, just keep looking to Him. How are you going to resist sin? How are you going to resist? The, you look to Jesus and you'll see His grace and you'll see that sin no longer has dominion over you. But you're not under the law, but you're under grace. We're under grace. Hallelujah. And so come to Jesus. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, uh, verse 30 in the New King James says, Come to me. Turn to Jesus, in other words. He said, Come to me. My God, our Savior, He's not, he's, he's, he's not a, a, a person who, who is snooty, who, who, who is so judgmental, who is a nag, who will come at you and say, well, come to me, I want to show you how... No, He's loving, He's kind, He's gentle, He's meek, He's provided so much for us. And He says, come to me, or turn to me, all that, uh, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, there's a rest that comes from Jesus that surpasses just a good night's sleep. I mean, I've dealt with insomnia in the past, and I know how insomnia can be debilitating, and a good night's sleep feels good. But you know, the kind of rest that Jesus gives you, it exceeds just natural human rest. Hallelujah. He said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are weary, are tired, and uh, turn to me, look to me. And I will give you what? Rest. Heavenly rest. Rest for your body and your soul. Hallelujah. So take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Where are we supposed to be learning from? Well, if you're not looking to Him, if you're not paying attention, how are you going to learn? If your ears aren't open, you're not listening. Like in class, hey, you try to get the students' attention so they can listen, so they can hear. If you can learn to listen, you can learn anything in life. That's what I tell a lot of my students. Hey, if you can learn, stop, stop. Learn to listen. You can do, you can learn anything in life. And so it's true with Jesus. He said, learn from me, for I'm gentle and I'm lowly in heart. In other words, he, he's humble. 
He's gentle. He's, I'm telling you, a lot of people have a wrong perspective of Jesus. They think Jesus is uh, like, uh, you know, uh, a harsh ruler. You know, he, he, he's, he's looking for you to make a mistake at first, so he could convict you and he can, and that's just wrong thinking. That's wrong thinking. Can you imagine your own children? You love them so much and you do correct them at times, but when they come to you, 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 do you want them to cower down? No, you want them to come to you, go, uh, love on you, tell them tell, that you, you, I like it. I know Noah, he's always saying, I love you, I love you. Noah Noah tells almost uh, all, everyone, I mean, I was hanging out with him, and he, I love you, Dad. Oh, I love you too, son. And so he, he, he was at school, and he told his, he told his friend, he, he was, hey, I love you. It was Sonny, actually, his name's Sonny. He said, I love you, Sonny. And, he just, and then he just went off his way, and we're walking together, and I was thinking, man, this guy, look at he, he he doesn't mind showing that he cares for people. And I think Jesus really would, it, it really pleases him when we understand how much he cares for us. When we understand how much he cares for us, then we can, we're able to cast our care upon him because he, he cares for us. We don't have to care because he cares. There's a little play on words there, right? We don't have to care, why? Because he cares for us. Oh, He cares about you so much. He cares about every situation in your life, everything that you're dealing with, everything that's hindered you. There's an opportunity for you to look to Him, for Him to supply that need in your life right now. Whatever need it is, look to Him and see, okay, I see it. I see it. I see it, Lord. You're supplying that need. That need has been supplied through your spirit, and I receive that right now. Even if you don't feel it, it'll work. It'll work. Even if you don't see, it'll work. It's working right now as I speak. As I'm looking to Jesus, He is at work right now. He's at work in your life right now. And that thing that's been bothering you, that stomach issue that's been bothering you, it's gone. That bloating, in Jesus' name, I command it to go right now. Bloating be gone, in Jesus' name. Headache, command you to leave, in Jesus' name. I just shake, shake your head, say, ah. And in the moment you shake your head, you'll realize it's gone. That headache is gone. <clears throat> Someone's experiencing blurry vision. Uh, you're, you're starting to see now. That blurriness is, is gone. You're starting to see clearly, clearly, clear, clear, clear as day. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus is here. Hallelujah. And where Jesus is at the Spirit of God, oh, He'll hover. And whenever we release our faith, the things happen. He's so excited to be on the move. He's so excited. I mean, he, he wants us to look to Him so He can he can go jump into action. Amen. But when we're proud, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. So we need to humble ourselves and realize that we actually need Him. And this is a still, we're still talking about grace, but we're just hitting a little different points here. Amen. And so Jesus kept on going. He said, I, For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find, this is Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, verse 30, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We need a soul. We need to have a rested soul. So many people nowadays are, I mean, I, I, I just mentioned how busy I am, but I have a rested soul. My soul's at rest. People who are real busy and running around to and fro, trying to figure things out. And, you know, it's like Martha, you know, she, when she was ser busy serving uh, and Mary was found at the feet of Jesus. And Martha wanted to say, Martha questioned whether Jesus cared for her. Now, don't, don't you care? You know, look at, look, at, look at all the work I'm doing. Don't you care? And, you know, uh, the, I've taken that uh, attitude at times. It's a wrong attitude. No, we're supposed to rest and sit at the feet of Jesus. Oh, it's just a wonderful place to be at. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The world seems to become busier and busier. There's no downtime. It's run, run, run. The world, to, the world seems like they have lost the pause button. Amen. And so, uh, in Matthew 11, uh, 27 in the Message Bible, it's the same scripture, but can I read it to you? I know uh, Jim Hockaday, he'll be coming to uh, the church soon. Amen. I'm so excited about it, actually. I'm, I get excited. I, I actually listen to his adventures. Of, I listen to, uh, and I go on, and I, I listen to uh, different places he's been. But he's coming to, uh, to Avenal, California, amen, September, I believe it is the September 10th and 11th, amen. So he's been reading this in an Adventure of, uh, of Grace, I believe. It's, it's Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. Whew. 
how did he talk? <laughs> did he talk real, real, oh, vi uh, real, real judgment, real, real harsh, real bitter? No, he, 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 was, he resumed talking, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and to say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does, but I'm not keeping it to myself. This is not just for me to experience. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone who's willing to listen. Hallelujah. Anyone who's willing to give an ear, he wants to go over line by line so you can experience that same intimate fellowship, that father and son operation, that, that same position with him. Hallelujah. And so Jesus wants us to sh share this unique father and son operation. He's not keeping it to himself. Is anyone willing to listen? Well, sin hinders uh, intimacy. Sin consciousness. A lot of people get sin conscious and they, don't like, they, they, get, they get afraid of, of, of uh, listening, right? God, well, he, Jesus wants to share so much. And he, you know, Brother uh, Dad Hagen or Brother Hagen, I, he's gone on to be with the Lord, I think it was 2003, if, I, if I'm right. Um, he, he had a vision of Jesus. And when he saw Jesus, he, he said, uh, he said, I'm unworthy, uh, I'm trying to remember correctly, but I believe he was, he was, he was saying, uh, no, no, I'm, 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 I'm unworthy, I'm unworthy. And Jesus said, he fell flat on his face. He's having an open, he sees Jesus. So just like, just like you're seeing me on the screen right now, he's seeing Jesus in person though. And he's saying, no, I'm not, I'm not worried. He fell on the flat on his face and Jesus kept, got real bold with him. You know, Jesus talks tenderly, but when, you, when, we did, when we say, oh Lord, I'm so unworthy, well, his blood has made you worthy. That's what Jesus said, my, stand up, my blood has made you worthy. Stand up, my blood has made you. Stand up. My blood has made you worthy. And so uh, it's important for us to realize this. If we don't realize uh, the blood of Jesus and what it's done for us and, and how it cl continually cleanses, it's a perpetual stream of God's forgiveness, which covers all our sin, past, present, and future. It's a stream, of just we're, 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 we're in the we're full full tilts jumped right on in we're, we haven't just been splattered with the blood we're fully immersed in the blood of jesus and it covers every area of your life hallelujah behold the lamb of god which take without the blood there is no remission of god's sin uh, of sin no, no remission of sin thank god for the blood of jesus Amen. The blood of Jesus. Glory to God. What it's done for you, it's, it removed. God will remember your sin no more. He's going to make a new covenant with His people. This is the main clause of the New Testament. The blood of your forgiveness of sins. Amen. And so, um, it's important for us to realize that uh, God wants to show us more than, you know, He wants to teach us more um, and he wants to increase us more not not necessarily in our spirit but he wants us to our mind will intellect and emotions to be saturated by the spirit where it affects not just our uh, our thinking but now our bodies affected and not, and now wherever we go even when we put, make contact with people there's there's a transmission that takes place because we're looking and we're, we're listening and we're coming to Jesus. We're turning to Jesus. We're constantly turning to Jesus. We're turning to Jesus, turning to Jesus. And when you, when you fall, you turn to Jesus. You wake unto righteousness. You wake to your, the, the, the blood, what the blood has done for you. You know, He convicts you of your, He convicts the believer of their righteousness. When you fail, guess what He does? He said, you're, you, you're, you, I, my blood has made you worthy.
And when, when we feel like we're unworthy and we feel like we want to just put our head between our legs and feel like, that, you know, just, I can't come to you. I'm, I'm, I'm just a wretch. I'm just a worm. He'll say, no. If you're a believer, he'll say, my blood, my blood, my blood, my blood, my blood has made you worthy. Turn to Jesus and look to what he's done for you. Amen. And so, uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, 16, I want to read a scripture here. And this is probably where we'll end. It says, therefore, from now on, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 16 through 19, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. According to the flesh, we, we don't regard anybody. In other words, we don't judge anybody according to their flesh, what, what, their race, ethnicity, color, whatever. We don't judge nobody according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ, we, uh, though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know Him thus no longer, not even Jesus. Therefore, if, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who reconciled us, who brought us back into harmony with himself through Jesus Christ. And he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. In other words, God was personally present in Christ, canceling out man's debt, canceling out man's sin, and he makes us brand spanking new. We're, 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 you're not... You, Oh, you're a new creature. You're a believer. Hallelujah. You're a believer. You're no longer just a natural human. You look to Jesus, and when you look to Jesus, and you said, ah, I, yes, Lord, you are, you're my Savior. I believe. I believe. I believe. He made you a new creature. And this new creature, when we turn to Him, oh, things, how, oh, how things look different when we turn to Him. Amen. How things change quickly when we turn to Him. Glory to God. And so I want to encourage you today to keep looking to Jesus. Keep turning to Jesus. Don't stop. Uh, whatever you do in life, if you just, it doesn't take long. You may want to pray in the Spirit. You might want to listen to uh, ministers like uh, Jim Hockaday and Adventures of Grace or uh, a few others. You know, there's Mark Hankins. There's a, there's a bunch of ministers you can listen to. But you know, it's good to listen to messages because these people are anointed. They're there to teach and for you to receive what they have. You're receiving what they're giving. Amen. So we're, when you look to and you're listening, you're at, that's part of turning to Jesus as well. Don't get me wrong. We're turning to what the Spirit is saying at that very moment. We're giving ourselves that time and those times are important. However, it doesn't take the place of you intimately conversing with Him. You intimately turning to Him. And, and you listening to him uh, and just and just sit there quietly and and you know a lot of times we'll just want to pray 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 and just you know uh, we do like a uh, machine gun tongues right we just and you'll stop after a while and the voice of the Lord you'll hear and it'll be clear clear crystal clear and you'll hear what he has to say and those few the, the moments you hear what he says all of a sudden you'll see, wow, and things will be lifted. And you'll experience that uh, heavenly peace. You'll, you'll experience heaven on earth. The moment you stop, you'll start to listen. You start to pray, Father, I just thank you for your goodness. I thank you for everyone who's watching right now, Father. I thank you that their eyes are open, their ears are here, their hearts are receptive, that, that they, they sense your spirit even as I speak. And that's your spirit is, is joined to them. And right now, Father, while we pray, we stop for a second and we listen to you. And you speak to our hearts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Father. Yeah, thank you, Father. So what did the Father say to you? Hallelujah. You know, oftentimes, you know what he'll say to me? He'll say, I love you. 
That's it. And he knows my love language. He knows I, I, when he says that, I get excited. When he says, I, I, thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you for caring for me. <laughs> you might not feel what I just felt, but a th it, I just get thrilled to know when I turn to Jesus, He's willing to show me the Father, show me how intimately we can be with Him. Well, Life Church, I just want to say uh, I'll be with you again in a few weeks, and uh, Pastor Sean will resume. Remember, uh, stay plugged in, guys. Stay plugged in. Stay, uh, stay plugged in, and keep your those ears on. And keep keep looking to Jesus. Amen. I love you, God bless, and uh, you know what, Jesus, He is Lord, amen, have a, a wonderful day.